Join us on this episode as we chat about the character of coffee, the beauties and the battles that it brings. I also wonder, have you ever associated clothed with invest? Jocelyn breaks this completely new thought down and it's pretty cool. And finally, we tackle the tough topic of codependency. We're real excited to dive in with you today. Hello there, I'm Christine James. And I'm Jocelyn DeWitt. And here's the thing, the God who created all the earth did not call you, set you apart, anoint you, and create you to live an ordinary life. He called you to live an extraordinary one. Now, Jocelyn and I, we don't have PhDs. We're, we don't have mega ministries. We're just two anointed ladies uh, oversharing about living devoted in the dailies. Welcome to the conversation. This is Devoted in the Daily. Welcome to episode 31 of Devoted in the Daily. Where we are going to bring up the letter C. C. All the favorite things. Because we're C. alphabetically going through all the things. We're going through all the things with letter C. What is your favorite thing that starts with the C? I think we have. There's a number, a number of. of C oh, I was favorites. like a number. What's? I thought maybe I missed something. What is our first favorite C? Are you ready? Uh, well, I've got a list. Oh. oh, yeah. No, I'm not ready for that. I think we need to end with our absolute favorite. Oh, don't you? Well, I think. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> that's a good point. You can start with for your first favorite. My first favorite is... You just whispered to me. Oh, my first favorite. My number one favorite is Christ. Number one favorite. Christ! Jesus! Christ. Jesus Christ. The big C. The big C man is our favorite C ever. Okay, okay what's another C? Another C of mine would be... Camping. Oh, I love to camp. I put oh. campfires. Campfires? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I like that. Camping, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To 100%. Yeah. You don't like just camping? I mean... <laughs> you guys, she camps like on an island. Yeah, we up do at a Priest week Lake. on an island the last several years. And it's like awesome, but it's also like... Is that a lot of work to prep? Because... Oh. Yeah, but it's almost, I would almost rather a week than three days because you're doing yeah. all the work. And is it dry camping? Uh, Yeah, there's no bad. There's just an outhouse. Okay. Yeah. So it's just straight up. Yeah. And you have to get there by boat, right? Yep. Yeah. So everything you want to bring is up by boat. Yeah. With we your four boys. Few, we might do a few trips. Yeah. I love it. The nice thing is I've got four boys, so they do most of the labor. The hard labor, you know, like yeah. I don't have to set up the tent. Man, I could just think about my next favorite, all the cooking that would happen out there on an island camping over a fire. It's the prep work. Yeah. Okay. What's some of your seeds besides campfires? Um, Cheese. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I haven't always been able to do cheese. I've had to like have seasons where I have, same, same, you yeah. know, turned off the dairy, but um, there are some cheeses that I do pretty good with and I enjoy. Right? I love cheese. Candles. Candles is good. Candles That's is great. good. Um I have veered away from the chemically fragrance ones and now like I'm doing the more, you know, not fragranty ones. I really like the woodwick. The the woodwick. Wood. wood, 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 wood. We can say that. Woodwick. Woodwick. We said it. Woodwick candles. Kind of reminds you of a campfire. They do. And they kind of crackle yeah. a little bit. So those are kind of fun. But I love lighting a candle on a rainy afternoon or in the evening as things are just kind of dying down and making dinner. I really have. I usually have candles going in my kitchen at all times. Yeah. Which is kind of weird because you're kind of told not to do that when you're cooking because then you can't really smell everything you're cooking but i just like the ambiance of a candle right i just so really you just need to switch to un non-fragrance ones yeah and i really like a pine scent so you know it's this sure yes you are right yeah non-scented yeah okay okay unscented i think Un is the word non-scented unscented unscented you would be correct celebrations we talked about that b you just love all the celebrations <laughs> and christmas and Christmas. So I feel like those. Oh, things, you know, I love um, creativity. Oh, 
I love being able to be creative. I love how creative God is and how he's like blessed us with the gift Shoot. of creativity. So good. Uh, I love crepes. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I was kind of frustrated the other day because I went to a restaurant and saw them using pre-made crepes. What? And I was like, I, if anybody knows me, my face says a lot sometimes. <laughs> and I think I stare, I stare at the kitchen. I was like, what? What are they doing? I don't know. I was a little bit shocked, but it's all good. It's all good. Should we do, move on to our mutual favorite? Um, Coffee. Coffee so much so. Coffee. Go ahead. So much that so. you got us matching cups for I, recording days. I did. Well, because the cup, she likes the iced coffee. She just likes the iced coffee. Yeah. I mean, and I go through seasons, but my I like my jars were just not big enough. You know, <laughs> like I was just giving her these little jars. Down in the back. Yeah. So yeah. we've got our water in the small cups and we've got our so That's what I had to have my coffee in for a long time in the small cup. But <laughs> then she coffee. then she blessed me abundantly with a big C cup and for my coffee. Yep. And it's lovely. We really like coffee. I and I'd like to transition into our thinking, like what we're thinking segment. Oh now. yes, we should. Because <laughs> I've been thinking about coffee. <laughs> I've been thinking about this coffee thing because recently I fasted. I did a fast, and coffee was one of the things I fasted. And now I've done coffee fasts before. You know, I've done like a three day coffee fast, but this was a longer one, mm-hmm, and. Mm-hmm. I really discovered what an idol I've made coffee to be in my life. Yep. Yep. Um, I mean, it's like people know when like they associate me almost with coffee. I mean, you will see me with a mug of coffee like almost all the time. I mean, it says it in your intro. You would most likely find me with a cup of coffee in yeah, my hand. That's true. Yeah. You will. Uh so it is something that I like. I really like it but um realizing that like it was harder to get up in the morning Mm. for like to meet with jesus without coffee and i just that like like the gut punch that 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 was to me like holy cow what jesus isn't enough like my time just with him i have to have my coffee too no that's sick you know like i just it was just really eye-opening to me Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and realizing okay Gosh, I've got, and it was, it was good to become so aware of it. Yeah. Like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I recently did something very similar to you where I, I fasted coffee stands. Yeah. I fasted coffee multiple times before. Also, you're like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. It's yeah. Like yeah. What you're going to share. It's yeah. Good. So I recently, um, I have a lot of thoughts about coffee stands, <clears throat> but the realization in the process is I was I was fasting and the Lord said, you need to fast coffee stands completely. And I was going to go out of town when I did it. And I was like, really? Mm-hmm. You're going to put me on a red eye flight and not say that I can have coffee while I'm out. Like, this is going to be interesting. Maybe I had a couple of Red Bulls, but re- um, I said that just for Christine. Maybe more, there was more than a couple. Anyway, it just <laughs> anyway, so we, I fasted the coffee stand so i would not go to a place that to, and buy any coffee anywhere besides have coffee at home so he didn't take it all the way away but um purchasing coffee and this amazing revelation hit me at the end of it okay about well i have a lot of thoughts about coffee stands but we're not right. going to go into that but coffee stands used to be i grew up in on the west side of washington and my my dad would take us to tolly's and get us mochas because okay. he loved the mochas. And so that's where I first started having like iced coffee with chocolate and cream and like all the things. Okay. And it was a stronghold. Like it it was mm-hmm. a stronghold because it was a cherished memory that I had. It was a bonding time that I had. It was a go out on the weekend, get your coffee. And then it turned into get your coffee before work, get your coffee down your way to church, get your coffee, you know, right. in the middle of the day. You need right. to pick me up, get a coffee. Like right. it became this dependent. snowballing dependent idol stronghold that I just was so over, Mm. so over, I was so over it. And I am so over it, let alone the cost. 
Like, let's, <laughs> let's not talk about let's, that. Let's not even go into that. But it all just kind of snowballed into like, oh, so I created an idol out of something that was from a place of good, good, right? Out of a good memory, out of just something that I love doing with my dad. And yeah. then it just snowballed for literally 30 years. Wow. You know, and we live in the Pacific Northwest, which so everywhere. It is. And it's good. <laughs> I'm just saying. You we know, do when like I it. moved here, it was, I mean, in my old. Yeah, what was that like? Well, you in moving my, up in here. My, it, at where we used to live, I would normally just go to Starbucks because you would never know the quality of like the independent shops. Like you just, it was just kind of like, I don't know. So I normally would always look for those, you know, the corporate places. Oh. And then, and then when I moved from California up to the Northwest, the ball, ch- the game changed. I mean, the game changed. It does. This coffee. I mean, they know here in the Pacific Northwest. They know. They know it. They know a thing or two. Yep. And these little coffee stands these little independent coffee shops and cafes they they know their stuff and yeah. they did good mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i 100 percent, it's good and it's it can be a problem <laughs> right and that's something we are you and i talk about this a lot it's something i'm continuously always working on so now when i go when i think about a coffee stand i think is it i don't need it i don't go anymore really unless yeah unless Lord's like, hey, go ahead, go get a coffee today. Like, mm. you know what I mean? I really am more diligent now since I ended the fast to pray and ask the Lord if it's something that that would be wise. That would be wise, would be like, or excessive. more of a blessing and more of a treat yes. now instead of just because. Or if I'm going right. out to like meet you for coffee, then yes, I will get a coffee. But yeah. I'm not gonna, yeah, just go get a coffee every single day. I mean, it got so bad was where I would like brew a cup of coffee to take in the car to go meet a friend for coffee. <laughs> Look at her, just <laughs> random. I mean, it's the truth. Time. It is a stronghold. It can be an idol. It can be an addiction. Like it really can. That's the truth. It can also be a blessing, right? And so we have to treat it as that. Yeah. Reel it in. Reel it in. Okay. So, there was another thing that you were thinking about, Jocelyn. Oh, what closed. Is that you've been been thinking about the word closed. Okay. I've thought about this for a while. And I've and Ezekiel 16 10 talks about how I closed you with jewels. I've closed you with fine linen. I've I closed you, right? Okay. I washed you, I cleaned you, and then I closed you. And in my mind, it just never really impacted me. The word closed never really impacted me. And God was like, like, look at all these things I've done and I've put on you. Like I I I do this for you. I want to do this for you. And I was like, yeah, I get it. Well, then he said, look up the word invest. And this is this happened to me about six months ago, but he's bringing it back up to my mind. Um, invest. Invest. And I was like, what? So I looked up, I looked up the word invest in, the, in um, the Webster 1828. And it said closed. Under invest. Under invest. And I was like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing here? And all of a sudden I realized I invested in you. I invested and I put fine linen on you. I put jewels on you. And the Lord was like, like I did, I invested in you. I only invest in on things and people that are valuable. Mm -hmm. Right. And the Lord was trying to get me to understand that I'm valuable to him um, in a very intimate, personal way by like, sure. I closed you. I'm like, this is not really clicking. Like it doesn't click. Mm -hmm. But when he said, I invest in you because I invest in what is valuable. Yeah. Right. What I'm thinking, what comes to mind is that he's not like, he didn't just like saving us was incredible, but he would die for us Yes, and save us from eternal damnation and from ourselves. But not only does he save us, but he invests in us to make us gorgeous. Right. And what does investment take? Investment takes sacrifice. Yeah. Right. So if you are investing in something, you're sacrificing somewhere Mm -hmm. else to be able to pour in here because you see something here that is valuable. And like the Lord was showing me that is you, like you are so valuable that I sacrifice to invest all of that sacrifice into you. 
Mm-hmm. And I just was like, whoa, it just hit, it hit me on a whole other level that like he invests because he says we are valuable because he sees something that we don't even see. He knows something we don't even know. How many times do you look at, and you think about the stock market? Well, I'll sacrifice over here and I'll invest here because I see value in that. Yeah. Right. That's exactly how he sees it. I don't know. I feel like I was supposed to give that example for somebody. Sure. So you're invested in. Mm. Closed. And closed. And closed. Yep. I don't know. As a creative, it's um, it's neat to think that he, like, making ourselves look nice or pretty or, um, you know, putting on the makeup, it doesn't necessarily mean vanity. Mm-hmm. But investing, investing in yourself, yeah, investing, and that God loves that. Like He invests, you know, He clothes yeah. us. He He cares about all of these things, and so I don't know. It's kind of I used to feel a bit of shame about that. Oh yeah, yeah, and so I don't know. It's it's neat to to See think it. about that. Yeah, yeah, and different. I I love that perspective too. That's good. Very cool. Very cool. So are you ready to transition? Let's into transition. Our- next segment of devoted discussion devoted discussion and we're going to jump into another (laughs) big c codependency oh look at that let's just (laughs) okay so codependency is um how do I say this? It's a big topic for me. Yeah, it's a big topic. And I love um, <clears throat> that Jocelyn is willing to go here because, you know, she she really invests and um, spends a lot of time with recovery in, in the recovery world. And so she has learned a lot about this. And I don't know, I feel like she's got a lot of good knowledge. So it's going to be fun. Well, yeah. it's going to be fun to hear you talk about it. I think. It's, it's kind of, okay. So codependency is like my, it's like my problem, my problem. Let's just, <laughs> was was my problem it's what got me on my knees like mm-hmm. honestly you know what i mean um it wasn't for me it wasn't uh a severe addiction it it was that was my addiction my addiction was people pleasing and giving of myself for everybody else and not um not even focusing remotely on myself so i think a lot of women can relate codependency was something that was birthed out of trauma that was birthed out of a lack of self-worth that was birthed out of abandonment that was birthed out of rejection, um, criticism Mm -hmm. and shame. So it was a way that I formulated and it is a way that you formulate, um, relationship and the way you just think that you have to operate in relationship. Right. So basically for my entire life, I just, since I could literally ever, I don't even remember a time that I wasn't codependent is this this the hard part i was super codependent um as a sibling Hmm. um to just give and give and give um because i just thought that's what made relationships work like i I, it was very one-sided i just made it a bigger deal on my side and and that was just me shoving down a lot of myself my trauma and my hurts and stuff and i don't i don't necessarily no, why? It's just a trauma response. So what does codependency really like look like? It looks like um, a lack of communication, a lack of boundaries. Um, it looks like people pleasing. It looks like um, not standing up for yourself mm-hmm. or not spending time nourishing yourself or self-reflecting. Um, it looks like choosing into relationships that are one-sided. Um, it also looks like allowing yourself to be in situations and relationships where you're being emotionally um, abused or or physically or any of it's unhealthy relationships. Okay. So, yeah. So how would one I'm struggling with this one? How would one some how would one try to change patterns of codependency? So the So you you mentioned communication and boundaries were two that popped out yes. from me. And self-reflection. 
Mm. Right. So the first thing that I ever had to do with my codependency was recognize that I was in denial, like recognize that I was in an unhealthy relationship, that I had many unhealthy relationships and that I was like last on the totem pole. Yeah. I had put myself, not that other people were doing that, you know, but well, sometimes uh, some, they, do. they just do what you lead them to do is part of the problem. Yeah. We allow them because we don't have boundaries. We don't communicate. We don't stand up for ourselves. Like it's a whole lot, but what happened was I recognized that I had been put at the very bottom of the totem pole by allowing it to happen, um, allowing other people to treat me that way. And then I was like, just had come out of denial first. You had to come out I of had denial to come out of denial first. that like I had been in that place for so long. Um, and we're talking every single relationship I have to do with <laughs> like, it's you have to come out of denial in every relationship because you have a bond and you have a relationship with somebody and you want to be in relationship with them and you love them and and you know you feel like led to have this relationship friendship whatever but you can still be codependent in every single relational situation yeah right so having that that coming out of denial moment of like what what who am i mm. in this am i being authentically myself Am I standing up for myself? Am I communicating? Am I intimidated and living this relationship out of fear? That's another thing. Um, am I, is this an equal balanced relationship? So it's, and it doesn't have to be right now to, in, today because every relationship goes through different things. Right. But really choosing in to like understand what relationship, what healthy relationship is. Okay. That's where I had to go to like see. So first realize this relationship is not healthy. And then and I'm not healthy in relationships. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm not. Cause it's not the other person. It's not necessarily. Yes. It's like, I'm not healthy in relationships with people because I keep habitually feeling do you end up feeling run over oh in all so you were just feeling like discarded and not yeah. heard or seen in all of your relationships right invaluable and then what happens is here's the thing though you feel like that but you shame yourself because you think it's your fault because you didn't provide enough into the relationship so then you give more yeah so you, like you just think further well, the Right. You just think, well, this is happening in this relationship because I didn't put out enough because I didn't, I didn't give enough of myself. So like, no wonder why this isn't working. It's my fault because you just blame everything on yourself, man. Yeah. So it's not very, there's, it's not allowing other people to take responsibility for their stuff. And you're on, you don't know where the line is of what you need to take responsibility for because you just, it's blurred. So coming yeah. out of denial is super important in that. And then choosing from that point on to learn what boundaries are. That was a really, really big deal for me. I feel like that's, I mean, that was key for me in some of my unhealthy relationships yeah. is learning. Yeah. It's just came down to what am I responsible for? And what are they responsible for? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And really learning about my soul, like being, you know, my mind, will, and, or my mind, my emotions and my choices are all mine. <laughs> like I am going to have to answer for all of oh, that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. And so I felt like that was kind of the basics mm -hmm. once I could kind of grasp that yeah. in it helping me with all of my relationships. Right. And getting around people who have healthy relationships. That was another big thing for me. Ah, like I yeah. I didn't know that weren't that I wasn't in. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're in relationship, you're trying to you can't see. Mm. But choosing to be witness and sit back and watch how healthy relationships flow and evolve and grow through seasons, like that was like a really big deal for me to be witness to. Okay. People that I wasn't deeply connected to, but like, okay, open myself up to see like how God moves in relationship to start noticing that. Yeah. Like what's healthy communication. That's the other part. Communication is big. Mind blowing because a codependent doesn't really communicate for themselves. They try to just mm. communicate for what they think is needed and what needs to happen and or what the other person wants to hear. Yeah. Yeah. They don't really stand up for themselves. And I'll give you an example of this. This is one thing that brought to mind is 
my car broke down last year and for me and all my kids to fit in one car, we had to drive my roommate's car. Um, well, I am used to being in C control and driving and <laughs> like stopping on somewhere if I want to stop somewhere or just communicating to the person like, hey, I need to go here. So I'm, I'm I'll just stop. Right. Well, the Lord bless his beautiful heart, put me as the passenger. And I, for years, didn't know what it was like to be a passenger in recovery of codependency. Okay. So yeah. Then came this moment of like, oh no, I ha- I need to stop at Hobby Lobby or I need to stop at the store. Like if we were out, like I need to, I want something. I need to do something. And I would have to, and this was stretching and I don't expect everybody to understand this, but it was extremely hard for me to say, can you stop at this store on our way home? Like, that was really, really hard for me to stand up and say that. And ex- and and maybe she would say yes, and maybe she would say no. And, ma- and I just assume that she would say no, because I assume that I'm an inconvenience. So that's my mentality was, well, if you ask for anything, you're going to be an inconvenience. And since she didn't bring it up, like, you're an inconvenience to her. Oh, man. Right. So I had to work through that. So Lord, let me be a passenger in her car for a year. And I'm like, having to grind out this, like what it's like to sit in the passenger seat and communicate my needs and desires and wants. Well, that's a good exercise. Yes. And it was not fun and I'm good now, but like it was, you got it. I got it. Now I know how to stand, like how to do those things. But like, I didn't know. Last year, I did not know how to be a passenger and ask and not expect to be rejected. Mm. Like, I just didn't know. Wow. I would just go with the flow of what the other person wanted and just kind of like, okay, well, we'll just, they said no. Like, I would ask maybe one person, they would go, no. I'm like, maybe next time. I'm like, okay. And it would just feel like, yep, because you're an oh. inconvenience. So it's like that kind of stuff. That's just hard. Relational things that you don't think about. That's not something you would just normally think about. You? What? Did you think that? That's what I was asking. You wouldn't think that a normal person would have to think work through being a passenger in a car? Um, it honestly, it's it is hard for me to feel like somebody is not being honest with me. Uh, oh, it's oh to as far as voicing what they need or what they want, or they are trying to tell me something that I want to hear versus something that they need. Oh, does that make sense? Um, Were you voicing just, their true opinion? So you just believe that everyone's voicing their true opinion? I I hope so. And if I can tell that they're not, I have a really hard time with that person. Yeah, I and I don't. I uh, I mean, there's explanations on you know personality tests that show you know that that is something that's really important to my per- and I it just really resonates with me because. If somebody is trying to fake something around me, I have a really hard time. And it bothers me when people don't say what they need. Right. And then I'm like, so then I'm responsible for. Right. It's this dance, right? Like, yeah, because then we could just go with it. Like I've been in many relationships, basically a lot, a lot of relationships where the person just goes with my codependency and is like, okay, well, they didn't say anything. So we'll just go with it. But the reality is, is like, I was like internally struggling but I live like this. Here's the thing. I live like this all my life. And so nobody really knew if I was internally struggling or not. I just, that was my personality. Do you know what I mean? Until yeah. the Lord was like, hey, so you got a lot of opinions and you got things that you want to do. And like, let's step up and ask People for those things. Hear those. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it had to work through the trauma to be able yeah. to even be yeah. willing to go there. Yeah. You know, and the thing about codependency, it's relational. So it doesn't just click. It's gone. It's like you have to continually work through it. Yeah. Like every relationship, I have to evaluate and look and say, am I being codependent? Am I in this relationship because of fear? Am I in this relationship because intimidity? Intimidity. That's not even a word. Um, What's the word? Intimidated. Intimidated. Um, Am I in this relationship just because I feel like I am supposed to be? Is like, huh? Or do I truly love this person, and I and I will continue to be in this? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a lot of, a lot of grind, yeah. a lot of refinement, and a lot of 
surrendering to like him. Yeah. And letting him lead it, even when it doesn't make sense to my old self. Yeah. I feel like a lot of this is like personalities. I think definitely trauma will will play a role. Well, it, trauma and rejection, all those things. And just how we're naturally kind of bent. Yes. Character. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, that's my thought. I mean, I think we all struggle with it at times, like mm-hmm. wanting to please other people and not be authentic. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a, it's a true struggle. And I think sometimes you could be, you could have codependent tendencies, but not be like codependent. Do you know okay, what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like now I think I, I've realized, oh, I was codependent in this relationship but I have codependent tendencies that I'm actively working on right now. So it doesn't mean I'm always codependent right now. It just means that like I have tendencies that are really getting pushed off and brushed off. Sure. And I personally think that is something I'm going to have to work on for a long time because that's how I that's how you function for a long time. Yeah. Um, And I'm a giver. So I naturally can fall into that place of, there's also so many beautiful things that comes out of that giving place. Yes. I mean, I like I I there are things that I just don't I'm not aware of. There are needs that I'm not even aware of um that others other personalities and characters are so much more compassionate about and can reach out and see and meet needs that I don't mm. even like that aren't even on my radar. And yeah. that, that really, um, it's impressive to me. Oh yeah. 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 I see what you're saying. Like there's a compassion level. I feel like I haven't reached. <laughs> the, the com- That's what got me in trouble. Do you know what told what the Lord told me one time? Tell me. He said, Jocelyn, your problem is that you're too compassionate sometimes. Like you don't ask me where the line of compassion, is. like where my compassion is and you're letting your flesh compassion kind of overspill. Uh huh. And you need to know like where the Jesus compassion line is. So you're not like overspill, mm. you you know, because sometimes- and I feel like my boundary line, <laughs> like, nope, I'm not going to open that line right there. I'm just going to, and I need to make it a little more flexible mm. and, and be a little bit more vulnerable. Oh yeah. So I hear that. And I need to reel it in. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, We're quite in, a, in a beautiful way. And it's just growth. Yeah. And hallelujah. Also that there are different parts of the bodies that we can learn from. Right. And- yeah. Cause I glean your boundaries. I am like, look, I am looking at people with good boundaries right now. And I'm like, okay, how do we communicate? And I <laughs> How do I open up more and love better? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a gleaning kind of thing. And yeah. I am so thankful. I oh, really, I am really thankful other, for that, man. you know, because there are people in my life now where I'm like, wow, like they have really good, healthy boundaries. And I, I am so, I just respect that. And I'm in awe. I think I just look at it like, huh. There's another C that this makes me think of. Oh, what's that? Sorry. Companionship. Oh, uh, look, that just you know, led, look at how that just led right over into we'll that one. Finish with companionship and a be- the beautiful thing that like re- how relationships are so messy, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And how we have to like think about those codependency tendencies and have yeah. healthy companionship. And what um come on good camaraderie. Did I say that right? Um, camaraderie. Camaraderie and companionship is so needed. It is. It's like a, it's like a, it's a warm, like hug. I just love companionship. Thanks for being a good companion. Oh, <laughs> look at her. Bless your heart. And I don't mean that in the Southern way. Okay. <laughs> is that bad? Is the Southern way bad? Yeah, they're like they mean it in like a snarky, like bless oh, your bless your heart. And I and I am northerner, so I can say it. But when you have people who are in the south, and then you can't say it to them, and so I'll say bless your heart in the northern way. In the northern way. This or the western. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> I just in the north. I mean it genuinely. Well, thank you for being a good companion. Christine. Bless your hearts. Thanks for watching and for 
engage in and we would love to hear all of your thoughts and what are some of your tendencies when it comes to codependency we would love to hear that was that was what that was quick on the tongue i like that Mm. join us for our live on february 28th because we can we would love to just really engage with you um hear what you got to say like let's talk about it for real like dig into some of these topics a little bit deeper yeah you have questions like I think that's going to be fun. I'm excited for the life. All right. Mark your calendars. Bye. We're overjoyed that you've chosen to tune into this podcast. We're adding two special links to this episode. Click that first one. If you want to learn about how to live in the spirit of power and walk confidently with the power of your choice while moving gracefully, you'll love the posture of power e-devotional within the train and truth premium membership. Now that second link will take you to a spoken word piece all about the spirit of power. This is what God has given us, not a spirit of fear and codependency, right? Now, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you leave a comment, you'll be sure to see us in the chat throughout the week. It's with so much gratitude, we pray that you will be filled with the knowledge of his will, bearing fruit and being strengthened with endurance and joy. Godspeed, friend.